Welcome back to Nightmine, friends. Thanks for joining me in the office again this evening to resume our hunt for the Infinity Killer. If you've opened up this video, which is part 2 of an open case, please head back to part 1 first, or you will be hopelessly lost and miss a lot of content. Otherwise, you're right where you need to be. Before we begin, I'd like to mention that we've gone over an awful lot of websites, downloads, and security threatening things left for players by Infinity, and our old friends at Surfshark have come by to sponsor this video so we're protected in dealing with whatever comes next. Surfshark's clean web technology lets you browse without fear of intrusive ads, malware, trackers, and information fissures, and you can use it on unlimited devices, all at the same time. Surfshark's toolkit also lets you hide your IP to stay off the radar of malicious individuals and provides industry-leading personal data encryption. You can even activate camouflage mode, which keeps your own internet provider from knowing you're using a VPN. And MultiHop allows you to connect to multiple countries, keeping your activity location disguised. It is the holiday season, and you may be getting plenty of new devices, either directly through presents or that sweet annual stack of gift cards from extended family. You can protect your goods and ride into the new year safe and sound with Surfshark for just 84% off of a two-year plan and four extra months for free at surfshark.deal nightmind. This limited time special offer makes your subscription just $2.13 per month so you can browse securely on all your devices. Again, just go to surfshark.deal nightmind and use the code nightmind to get 84% off a two-year plan and four extra months for free. Or just click the link in the description box below. Thanks to Surfshark for watching our banks while we pursue infinity. Now, let's get reacquainted with our previous position in the hunt. The Infinity Killer, going by the username F8, Fate, had revealed five victims in full and introduced players to victim number six, a fireman he burned alive. Hunters provided a briefing after that reveal and also showed us she received a cake from Infinity with a code written in frosting. So, what happened next? On September 3rd, a surprise action from Infinity preceded his next therapy video. ARG Nets Michael Anderson received a package from the killer, addressed to fellow staffer Selena Beach. Inside was an anatomically correct chocolate heart, a USB drive, and a postcard showing the original San Diego kill room. On the back was a message. Selena, I've been following you for a while, and it seems you're onto me as well. I have to say, I'm quite flattered. I'm thinking you might be interested in picking my brain. Assuming my heart, what's your appetite? You plus eight other bloggers I admire have received packages like the one you just opened. I'm going to grant an exclusive interview to the first of you to write a story about me and the present. I can assure you, my friends are just dying to see it. I am always thinking of you. Fate speaks. On the flash drive was a video message from Infinity, uploaded for viewer benefit. This is the part where I open up. Most people try so hard to stand out. I fight and blend in. In many ways, I'm just an ordinary guy with an ordinary life. But this I've spent years cool. perfecting the art of being forgettable. Uh. See? I'm just like the guy next door. If the guy next door kills people. Serial killer. Such a flawed choice of words. It makes it sound repetitive, like reenacting something over and over with no idea what we're doing. But I have an idea. I choose my friends very carefully. Eight people. Eight people who lived to change the lives of many. Who died to change the lives of more. I'm not done yet. And if you play nice, I'll let you watch. I know you want to see those quick images, so here they are. Huntress updates her blog about this occurrence and players use phrases from the postcard to find the next website, IamAlwaysThinkingOfYou.com. Checking this against the cake Huntress received also reveals that was the code. This website apparently had side-by-side -side videos of smoke rings, a puzzle solved through use of a Polybia square, resulting in the message, Summon the Victim. That turned out to be a YouTube channel with one video. With no idea who needed summoning, players sat and waited for the next movement. 
Thankfully, Infinity came through with Sleep Therapy Video 7, but this pattern was quickly hinted at as not holding out for long, with Fate saying, There's a good chance I won't be needing our weekly sessions much longer. I'm thinking of switching things up a bit. I would definitely be disappointed to find myself back at square one after all this work, but then again, sometimes you have to take a step back in order to move forward. When you have things to chance, possibilities can be... infinite. But chance can always be cheated. Fate, on the other hand, fate, as they say, les gens sont faits. This is a French term Infinity has used, meaning the chips are down. As the video played, Infinity could be seen rolling dice five times. Huntress updated her blog, urging players to submit videos to some of the victim. She also seemed to be spurred into action of her own by Angel, the timeline keeper. Okay, thanks for your video, Angel, no relation. You're right. If uh, you guys are going to do it, I should too. So, Infinity, if this is the way it has to be done, then let's play. Okay, so, unknown victim, I am officially summoning you. Who are you? What's your identity? When did you die? Where are you? Can you tell me anything that might be helpful? Oh, and uh, one more thing. Be sure to tell the guy who took your life that I'm coming for him. A few days later, the Summoning YouTube channel posted responses to four questions. Who, where, how, and why? Answers were, I am Voodoo Man, False Alarm, Burned Alive in Warehouse, and I can influence the fate of others, but not my own. I Am Voodoo Man was the next website, containing a video of a voodoo doll dressed as a fireman burning and dated 2-2409. Hunters provided an update soon after. Hey guys, thanks for joining us again after the holiday weekend. I know many of you spent the weekend busy hunting, so thank you for that. Alright, first of all, good work finding the site with the burning voodoo doll. Based on the evidence you guys discovered there, I've been looking into past murder cases involving firefighters, but nothing relevant was coming up. However, using the date in the video, I was able to find one case involving a missing firefighter in Pennsylvania. His name was Lance Anderson, and this is really bizarre, but he disappeared in a warehouse while responding to a fire alarm, which turned out to be a false alarm. Yeah, well, I'm sure you know what I'm thinking. But either way, we don't have a body, so... There's no proof yet. We're not done here. All right, I also have another update. For the past few weeks, I've been looking into the Sleep Superbly company. I finally got in touch with their CEO, Colin Trebold, but the problem is, is he's being really tight-lipped, and what with me not being legal law enforcement anymore, I cannot compel him to talk. I've shared my information with the guys at the FBI, but... You know how bureaucratic BS works. It's going to take weeks for anything to go through. We don't have that kind of time. I'll share Trey Bolt's statement on my blog, but uh, truthfully, it's not all that helpful. All right, guys, there's still work to be done, so let's keep hunting. Thanks. Information from the article Hunter shared pins Lance Anderson as the burning victim. He also had a Facebook profile available to view, now with an avatar of a voodoo doll. His last status read, I'm looking to visit some new friends. Who can I come visit? Message me. Several players sent messages and provided addresses. Meanwhile, players hanging out in the IRC chat for the Huntress site notice a visitor with an odd name appear and then quickly exit, followed by another, dropping hints at a method for decoding Infinity's dice rolls in the previous sleep therapy video. Visiting the Google spreadsheet where work was being done on the answer showed someone had slipped in and provided an extra line, unveiling a new website with the phrase, luck isn't fair, and a black maneki neko, the Japanese luck symbol. A coin was also shown at the bottom, but the kanji read treasure rather than the amount for the coin. Angel's timeline informs us that a whole lot of guesswork led to the next website, lucklesslottery.com, presenting a game that was impossible to win, unless you entered the world's most famous cheat, the Konami code. A victory message would say, Congratulations, you cheated, you won, and present winning numbers that turned out to be an IP address. At that address, there was a site called Throwdown with pictures of hands playing rock, paper, scissors, and instructions for players to get a webcam, headphones, and a microphone. 
a game would be occurring that Friday at 4.08 p.m. Now, remember the tag Infinity left on Sarah Zeisel's dog? This, too, was a code, hinting at specific points of time in the video recording that, put together, led to another website, which held the full security footage showing Infinity walking to his car from the home after breaking in and Tyler's car on approach. The ability to exonerate Tyler's Zeisel had been acquired. On the heels of this victory came the Rock Paper Scissors game, a tournament held by an actual league who enjoyed doing it competitively. At the end, anyone watching from Infinity's Link received a message. Those are some killer hands you've got. By chance, are you a killer? Either way, congratulations. Are You a Killer was the next website, holding eight Rorschach tests, which all had one correct answer. They were, in order, Dead body, skull, gun, tooth, burning man, knife, bullets, heart. A correct series of answers would grant a video with a message. It appears you may have the qualities of a killer. Watch this video to cure yourself. It was a hypnotic, almost seizure-inducing jumble of images and lights, apparently with a hidden message for the next website, surplusmedsupply.com. It served the Miami area and had an email address, but players received no response. A new sleep therapy video arrived from Infinity, the 8th, which showed him in what looks like a server room, holding some videotapes. He informs Iris he's back in the office and expecting visitors soon, so he'll need to clean up. He feels he's made real progress and may be ready to proceed on his own. Fate will leave a testimonial for the company as a goodbye. He does exactly that, writing, I was quite the skeptic when it came to therapy, but I must say, sleep superbly has completely changed my mind. I would definitely recommend this to my friends, especially those who have had experiences that keep them up at night. The word therapy was a hyperlink pointed at a YouTube video. Revelations by the channel Fate Reveals. So can you tell me your name? Driscoll. Okay, and how old are you? I'm nine years old, I'm almost ten. My birthday's in August. Oh really? Well, half the reason we brought you here today is to ask you some questions. Is that okay? Describe for me what happened that day. It's not my fault. He made me do it. Driscoll, no one's trying to blame you. Can you tell me about the man? The one who took you? You don't want to talk about that? How about the little boy? The one who's there with you. Can you tell me a little bit about him? He's nice. Who else was there? The girl. And can you tell me a little bit more about this girl, Driscoll? We're going to a movie tomorrow. Do you still have those dreams, Driscoll? Sometimes. That's been and done. It's gonna be me. And are they about the man with the spinning gun? Not anymore. So then, can you tell me what they are about? Driscoll? Mother told me you used to love ballet. Why don't you want to do that anymore? Uh, what about the kids at school? Why aren't you hanging out with them as much as you used to? I don't know. They don't like me anymore. I feel kind of weird. Weird? Why? Wow. If that was what it seemed to be, we really are in Revelation territory here. And if we slow down and catch the article that flashed by, it shows we are indeed looking at deep connective tissue between our huntress and killer. Serial killer killed by child, Miami. Two children, Driscoll Connor and Dee Pratt, are in police custody this morning after having been abducted and held captive for three days by an unidentified man that authorities know only as the Roulette Killer. According to police, the children were able to escape their captor when 8-year-old Driscoll Connor obtained a gun and shot him in the chest. Authorities have now confirmed that the man did not survive the incident. As a matter of procedure, both children will undergo a complete medical examination and will be questioned about the incident before being released back into their parents' custody. Authorities have been searching for the mysterious roulette killer since 1979. He is known to be responsible for at least seven child murders and was given his moniker based on his obsession with the concept of chance. 
Oddly enough, he would never directly carry out any murders himself, but rather force his victims to kill each other. According to accounts from survivors, he would make them play his own twisted games of chance to decide which of them would have to die at the other's hands. At this time, authorities are not expecting to file any charges against Driscoll, as the incident was clearly an act of self-defense. Another article, Boy Hailed as Hero After Brush With Serial Killer, describes a roulette killer's game between Driscoll and D as Spin the Gun. According to the children's statements, when the gun stopped and pointed at D, the roulette killer instructed Driscoll to pick it up and shoot her. Driscoll instead turned the gun on the killer and shot him, ending his life. This is huge. Not just for story reasons as a self-contained plot, but because it's majorly reflective of the themes found in Dexter. Dee Pratt, the Huntress, knows she must come clean after this, and does so in the following video. Hey guys. Uh, last week, I mentioned that uh, this might be a personal thing, and that has been confirmed. Listen, there have been some things in my past... There have been some things in my past that I don't talk about, but, um... When I was eight years old, I was abducted. You guys saw the article. It was me and another little boy. The boy in the video, his name was Driscoll Connor. He was a child. He was forced to make a horrible choice. He saved my life. Okay, look, you don't just recover from an experience like that. I didn't, I <laughs> changed my entire life. It's the whole reason that I joined the FBI. It's the reason that I started Justice by All. He's, he's become consumed with this idea of fate, <laughs> which is kind of appropriate in a fucked up kind of way. We would take such opposite paths and then end up back in each other's lives. So, there you go. I, uh, I would have shared this before, but it's not really the kind of thing that you just tell. You know, I've helped put away a lot of really, really bad people, and I thought that maybe one day one of them would try to retaliate, but I didn't see this. So listen, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Driscoll, but what he's become is unforgivable. I never really saw him again after the incident, so I've been looking into his life since then. From what I can tell, he left home after age 17 and uh, just disappeared. No paper trail, nothing. But we need to keep hunting. And, uh, Driscoll, if you're watching this, and I'm assuming you are. What? I'm sorry, but you know that I... that we have to come after you. This was a twist that really hit from out of the blue, and one player experiences that kind of feeling themselves as an unexpected visitor shows up at their door. Dressed like an undertaker, they delivered an urn and read a eulogy, then left. Inside the urn was, of course, ashes, but also a jewelry box containing a ring inscribed with a message, For my love, Lance. Lance was the firefighter burned to death by infinity. Did this player dig through Lance's ashes to find that ring? It's... Better not to think about it. Next, the medical supply site is hacked, showing a link to another of Infinity's websites, showing off a video in which he stalks Dee Pratt and talks to her on an elevator about the weather. On her blog, Huntress says it appears to have been recorded while she was with the FBI. And as for that medical supplies company, they were under suspicion of performing unlicensed plastic surgeries. The suspicion is that Infinity is using their site to point out to players that he went under the knife to keep his identity secret. His teasing increases dramatically after, taking over the medical site again to point players to Anantatech Labs, an IT company based in Miami that was responsible for a number of things, including the Sleep Superbly website. It was founded by self-made man Eric Somrock, who fit the profile for the Infinity Killer. Agent Pratt sent police immediately, but Eric's home and office had already been vacated. 
Hey everybody. Um, okay, we have a lot to talk about today, but before anything else, I want to give you an update on Ananta Tech Labs. As you know, after you found it, I delivered the info to the Miami PD. I accompanied them to the scene. Um, this is what we found. The fact that he led us here. Um, we're, we're pretty certain now that Driscoll's new identity is Eric Sonrock. Uh, I guess it also explains how he's been able to fund his activities. The fact that he's led us right to him, to his new identity. He wouldn't do that if he didn't have some kind of larger game plan, an end game. I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. Secondly, secondly, I know you guys have had a lot of questions after discovering my past the way you did and then learning how close he was able to get to me. And it must have been quite a shock for you. Think what it was for me. I, I get that you guys are upset, but I also know that you understand that this is hitting me pretty hard. So, listen, let's clear the air. On Thursday, I'm gonna have an open Q&A with you guys via my YouTube channel. I'll give you more info later, but I'm gonna ask you guys to upload your questions via video and then I'll do the same with my responses. I know that I've asked a lot of you through this process and you have delivered more than I could possibly imagine. So, to all my hunters, I just want you to know that I appreciate all that you've done, all that you do. So, I'll see you then. Following this video came another unexpected hit. A directly invasive mockery of Dee and her work through the YouTube channel, from her desk, by Infinity. It was chalked up as a bonus challenge for players to put back in the right sequence, but I've done that work to give you the end result here. Dee, I have to say, I really like your setup here. It's, uh... So austere, such a great place to think. I was hoping to bump into you, but I guess that's my fault for coming in announced. It really is a uh, fortunate missed connection. Yesterday, my day just isn't my lucky day. But uh, we'll reconnect sooner or later, and I just uh, hope you don't get cold feet. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Go hunt. As usual, Infinity's words carry clues for progress. Unfortunate misconnection refers to Craigslist misconnection ads, where a post was made by Infinity in every city he's claimed a victim. Three in Miami, the rest in Philadelphia, Richmond, San Diego, and Chicago, which brings us eight. Words posted to the ads could be combined to make a full message. It's been years since I've seen you in person. It's been even longer since you've seen me. I went by your place today hoping that you might be there, but apparently I just missed you. Such a shame. I was hoping to have the opportunity to catch up. If it's fated for you to find this, then I hope you take the time to respond. I'm sure I'd recognize you in a crowd of thousands. Hopefully I can hear your voice again. I have so much to share. Eight victims. We surely haven't found them all. Matthew Clark, Identity Thief, San Diego. Santos Jimenez, Drug Pusher, Miami. Colonel Joe Wellmont, Retired Military, Chicago. Sarah Zeisel, Judge, Richmond. Dr. Brooke Walder, Heart Surgeon. Lance Anderson, Firefighter, Philadelphia. That's only six victims. We're missing two. Will Infinity lead players to find them before he reaches his endgame? Or do they miss opportunities to uncover those stories? I suppose we'll find out. On September 15th, Dee updated her blog to let players know she's alright after the break-in, and she responded to the misconnection ad. We received screenshots of her communication, with Infinity saying, Huntress, it really is about time you and I had a one-on-one. -on -one. I'd give you all the info, but I know how you just love the thrill of the hunt. I promise, though, when we speak, it'll be my treat. The cupcakes are coated with the same method as the cake and simply spell, Go Hunt. But as it turns out, this was the password for the F8 email account. 
Images were saved in the drafts folder that match murders were aware of, and an infinity symbol to cap them all off. Huntress carries on with her Q&A as planned next, and there isn't much of note that comes to light, just general curiosities about her life, like the key necklace being a gift from her mother after the roulette killer incident, and Dee's departure from the FBI being purely because she felt crowdsourced crime solving was a path she had to pursue. It's question number six that gets interesting. A message from Infinity. Can you feel that the end is nearing? Hey. I thought you might pop in. Your question sounds familiar. Why, why is that? Yeah, I guess it is irritating when you lose control. Although, no, I, I thought fate was in control, so this is all according to plan, right? You know, ever since you saved me, I remembered you as a hero. But now with your revelation the other day, I'm starting to see you in a whole new light. So I've been going over and over our experience together and I, I finally worked up the nerve to go and get the files from the roulette case. You will never guess what I found. Seriously, this is your grand inspiration? I still remember when he told you to pick up this gun and shoot me dead. You're just this frightened little boy. But you got this strange calm about yourself and, and you gripped the gun with both hands and you whispered through your teeth. You remember what you said? You can't make me. Well, I'd say he made you. He made you into some unoriginal copycat version of himself. I mean, <laughs> come on, fate? Really? Is that supposed to make you original? Oh, no, no, your little F8 game is nothing like roulette's sick games of chance. Oh. Let me tell you something, fate is chance, in disguise. And you are nothing but a wannabe roulette killer who happens to know how to hack stuff. What you are is probably exactly what he wanted. So congratulations. Dee moves on to her next question, which concerns what happened to the criminals she helped catch. Hi, Max Wake. Thank you for your question. Um, Yes, I did piss off a lot of people, but I promise they were only bad people. <laughs> Some of them being serial killers. And you are correct, my past is now obviously extremely relevant to this case, but I don't think my years in the FBI are connected to the case we're currently investigating. Except that, yes, the people I put away, some of them ultimately got the death sentence. So. You could argue that I controlled the fate of others, but indirectly. I don't know. I guess... Hello? Okay. Yeah, here we go. Wow. Now, I've dealt with people who didn't understand the first thing about me, but you really take the cake. You call yourself the serial huntress? You don't have a clue about serial killers, and stop trying to pretend that you know me. Whoa, 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 okay, easy there, easy there, you're gonna work up a sweat. For you to compare me to roulette is just so pedestrian. Oh, sure, we both kill people. Who cares about our motives? Or, or M.O., or the philosophical nuance of chance versus fate. Right, right. Well, D, since it's still not clear to you, it's my fate that made me. And that fate manifested itself for the first time as a gun that happened to have a symbol on it. A symbol that I gave new meaning! How's that for original? I, I hope it helps your little Q&A. We'll see how you feel about fate when it finds you. She got under his skin immediately. 
There was no question that Driscoll cared deeply about the messaging of his murders, but the insult struck him hard and fast enough to show how easily he could be shaken. We also couldn't see the infinity symbol carved on the gun from Dee's picture, an unfortunate side effect of video capability at the time for YouTube, but now we know it was there. Driscoll's question to Dee led to the next website hit, theendisnearing.com, which contained video from a Ustream channel by the same name. At 8pm that night, it activated, showing a man in black approach a door and place down seven garden gnomes. After this, Dee surprises us. She made up the emails and the images from Driscoll, hoping to infuriate him through imposter actions. It worked, getting him to call in after her insults, and she traced the phone call to his hotel room, but he made it out before police arrived. He did, however, leave in a hurry, which meant he forgot a jacket containing a list of 18 players' usernames. Those who watched the entirety of the Ustream reported a number of strange sights having to do with numbers, which composed a phone number. When called, a homeless person on camera holding an end is near poster answered and said, Everything is written in the stars, the name for the next website. That contained a constellation clicking puzzle that spelled out the following website, we were meant to meet again.com. That site featured all of Fate's Twitter followers' avatars and asked players to send the complete image to an email. What does that mean? It didn't refer to the actual avatars. Driscoll sent a direct message to a number of followers with a random statement that included odd capitalized letters. Those letters were the back end of image drop links, where that particular user would have their portion of the final image that needed to be sent to the email, after coordinating with everybody else who got a direct message. And the final picture was... this. A hybrid of Driscoll and these faces. But then, because this is infinity and nothing can be simple, players who sent the complete image were told he wanted the message he composed to them all put together and sent along too. It took the group two days and 22 attempts, but they eventually got it right, after some hints from Driscoll along the way. When you build your life on an idea, that idea can become the source of all of your success. A truly powerful idea, when you devote your life to it, can actually make an impact beyond your own life to the lives of countless others. However, the very idea that drives your success can, to the same extent, be the cause of your collapse. If someone is aware of the power that idea holds over you, they can exploit it to their advantage. And by attacking the idea, attack the very foundation of your existence. If that happens, then you should be ready to die for your idea. This may come off as a romanticized notion to many modern individuals. That's only because, these days, although many claim to, very few people truly build their lives on an idea. And those that do become labeled as fanatic, militant, or simply insane. Still, assume that there are people in this day and age who truly build their life on an idea. Say you're one of those people. Now, say the idea that you've built your life upon is the notion of justice, determined not by gods, kings, or appointed wise men, but by every person with a desire to participate. By definition, your idea relies on the people who help manifest it. The people and the idea become intertwined should anyone try to attack that idea, then to defend it would imply protecting the people who are part of it. So, would you risk dying for an idea? Angel, the timeline keeper, was the one to succeed in getting that message correct. She was rewarded with a request for her address to receive a treat. Driscoll continues taking emails and requesting addresses until he's collected aid, then declares on Twitter, those of you getting treats, be excited. And everybody else, don't worry, the best is yet to come. Huntress provides an update next. Hey guys, um, so based on the events of the past week, we knew that he was leading up to some kind of end game, and uh, today I get this message in the mail. Uh, this is basically an invitation for me to meet him alone. No, I'm not stupid. I know that I'm essentially walking into some kind of a trap here, but, uh, well, that's a risk I have to take. So alone means no police, no backup, and it also means that I have to do this without you. No, I'm sorry. You guys have been my partners in this, some of you from the very beginning. But now I have to go it alone. 
I don't know what I'm walking into here, but no matter what happens, I want all of you to know that I truly appreciate all the contributions that every single one of you has made. You are all genuine hunters. I couldn't have done it without you. I mean that. So thank you. And wish me luck. As alarmed as players were, the game continued. On the morning of September 22nd, those who were promised a tree from Driscoll received one of the gnomes planted during the previous livestream, each with a word written on their back. The message read, If you go hunt, please watch your back. Driscoll had changed we were meant to meet again.com to show the gnomes and provided spaces to fill in the blanks on their backs. Once that occurred, a countdown timer appeared, pointed at 4.08pm on September 23rd. More time was added to the clock on that day as Driscoll said on Twitter that D seemed to be running late for their meeting. When it ran down, it provided a link to a hijacked version of the serial huntress site, now labeled Fate, Murder by All, placing Driscoll and D back in the same situation they first met. A game of lethal roulette, now with a twist. Viewers would vote to decide who dies. The finale was recorded and uploaded to YouTube courtesy of a player who set up the channel ARG Dexter. Major thanks to them for capturing the conclusion. This meeting between Driscoll and Dee is just over 20 minutes long. I'll provide a link to the channel hosting the full pieces in the description below. We'll review the highlights here. Dee, so nice to see you. I'm glad you could make it. Driscoll? Oh, p please join me. It's not a courtesy call, let's just get straight to the point. Always focused. I can appreciate that, but just because you're dealing with a killer doesn't mean we can't be civil. All right. I'm here. I'm alone. Are my hunters safe? If you mean, am I going to kill them, then yes they're safe, but just because they're going to live doesn't mean that their fate isn't sealed. What is that supposed to mean? What are you going to do to them? Oh. Let's just say it's already over for all of us. You see, as of right now, an automatic rifle is pointed directly at your head. But no, don't move. It's set to trigger if your head moves too far outside of the line of fire. I mean, trust me, you may have fast reflexes, but you'd have to be Neo to... Uh, get out of this. So my advice is keep your head as steady as possible. I mean, I really wouldn't want you to die by accident. It makes you feel better, though. There's another rifle just like it. And it's straight at my head, too, so once again, we're in the same boat. I knew my chances when I came here. What does this have to do with them? Well, see, I was just about to get to that. See, assuming that both of us can keep our heads straight, neither of those rifles is going to fire until a timer runs out. But between now and then, though, your precious hunters have to decide which of us should die. Oh, you know that they're watching right now. It's all live. It's on your site. Here. Take a look. Oh, yeah, I did a little redecorating. So yeah, it's a simple system. Two buttons, one choice. Kind of reminds me of the last time we were facing each other, except this time I'm not the one holding the gun. Also, in case you're wondering, the uh, timer starts now. So, you're making everybody else do your dirty deed, huh? You know, I'm pretty sure that not all of them are as disturbed as you are. What if they don't play? You found my loophole. No, I'm just kidding. See, if all of our friends get to the site and then exit out, or if they just sit there and watch like not-so-innocent bystanders, then both rifles go off and they kill us both. So, at this point, they really don't have a choice whether or not to kill. They can only choose who. Well, I have some news. Um, you may not be holding a gun, but I am. And it's pointed at you under the table. 
really didn't want to have to shoot you in front of all these people, but I gotta say, I'm warming up to the idea. I see. Wow, that's pretty stealthy of you pulling your gun out. I didn't even notice. But to answer you, well, you can pretty safely assume that these people are about to witness one, if not two, executions. Fair enough. So, yes, you could shoot. I'd really hate that, though, and not just because of the uh, angle that you're pointing at, but because I've clearly gone through some trouble to pull this all together, and it really would be a shame to let it all go to waste. But even if you do shoot me, I don't think it's going to do you much good. See, I uh, should have mentioned this sooner, but if my head falls out of the line of that rifle before the timer runs out, then both rifles will automatically go off. Really, waiting until our friends make their choice is the only chance you have to make it out of this alive. Well, that's assuming I believe everything you've just told me. True. But how about this? Rather than trusting my moral integrity, you could trust that I've accounted for every scenario. I mean, I've only been planning this for 15 years. Doubt me at your own risk. I'm actually starting to feel a little pity for you. You know, I, I don't think those sleep sessions are working out for you. you know, if you do end up being the one to walk away from this, you might want to consider getting some real help. Ouch. So now I'm not only a deranged psychopath, but my online therapy sessions are somehow to blame? <laughs> Come on, D. Don't pick on Iris. You might not have noticed this, but... Um, She's not a real person. I mean, come on, that's it's almost as bad as making fun of a killer that you failed to catch. Oh, well, maybe it was fate not to catch you. I mean, everything's written in the stars, right? Oh, there's a, there's a problem with that, you know? Fate may have made you a killer, but when you saved me, you also became a hero. You chose your own path. This is never about fate. This is about a choice that you made. See, the problem with your point of view is that you see things in terms of right and wrong. Killer versus hero, but my view of the world is quite different. You don't say. So when Roulette put the gun in my hand, I could feel that my fate was sealed. I had to shoot. I had to kill. All I could choose was where to aim, so... With that, you say that I made a better choice, a moral choice, saving the innocent girl from the evil serial killer. But I didn't do that. I didn't choose to shoot him because he was evil. I shot him, as you so aptly pointed out in your Q&A, because when he put the gun in my hand and told me to shoot, my gut instinct said, you can't make me. So yes, I mean, he already turned me into a serial killer, but in a split second, pointing that gun away from you, I went from being the powerless victim to taking control away from someone who thrived on controlling the fate of others, including my own. That was my choice, and I believe my fate. Wow. I have to say I'm fairly impressed with that level of uh, involvement with justification. It's almost like you spent the better part of the last 15 years just coming up with that argument. <laughs> it's really a shame nobody buys it but you. That's debatable. I, well, yeah, maybe, maybe you will get some more followers out of this one. I mean, after all, this is pretty fantastic publicity stuff. You know how you operate. Come up with some divine reason that explains away all the evil things that you've done. And then you expect the rest of us to buy into your ridiculous dogma. I don't know who you've got watching right now, and maybe there are a couple crazies in the crowd. My guess, most of the people viewing this little spectacle of yours aren't exactly seeing things through the distorted perspective of a serial killer. No. I would say that what they're seeing is 
not a guy who's acting out some preordained purpose. I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure they understand. They know they're just watching a guy who's lost his mind. Lost his mind, maybe. Still, um, not trying to be cocky, but you sound like you haven't been listening to our friends very much because they're not all so crazy about you. It's not a popularity contest. They've been working extremely hard on a serious investigation and suddenly the killer they've been looking for is just a mouse click away. Well, I guess we'll see. But, you know, people have a thing for serial killers. It's just like a secret fascination. I mean, nobody really talks about it, but uh, a lot of friends kind of do, but they're a special crowd, so... Now they get to be the villains for a day. Kill somebody from behind the curtain of a little computer screen. You know, people would do crazy things knowing that curtain is there to protect them. And killing you is probably not among the craziest. Neither is killing you. Exactly. And the best part is we'll never know why they do it. Maybe it's because they didn't like your makeup one day, or because I'm just too charming to live without, or if they do kill me, is it because they're following your moral code, or is it because they want to emulate my own defining moment, controlling the fate of the person who sealed theirs, just as I did to roulette? Following our friends, I certainly wouldn't surprise me. But either way, I'm... Uh, I'm ready to accept my fate. How about you? I make my own fate. <laughs> but there's one thing that I'm just not quite understanding. You seem pretty confident that you've got a decent shot at getting up and walking out of here. You might. But you kill all these people who you say control the fate of others, and yet here you are, forcing my crowd to, be, to become the killers. So, so help me understand this. Wouldn't that mean that you are controlling their fate? And according to your own reasons, all these so-called friends of yours would be forced to kill you. Yeah, they might. And you're right. I did control the fate of those I killed, and I'm controlling that of our friends right now by forcing them to become killers. But that's why there's a rifle pointing at my head. But the same goes for you. You've controlled the fate of those you've hunted, and now you're controlling our friends by turning them into hunters. Absolutely not. Dead wrong. I never held a gun to their heads. I never forced them into a catch-22 like you're doing now. My hunters are incredibly smart, and they've proven that time and time again. And I'm not completely understanding why you can't get that through your skull. If everyone is watching, is as smart as the people that I've been working with, I'm looking at a dead man. I mean, what are, what are you trying to accomplish? Or are you trying to create a little army of serial killers, and they're all forced to live through the same shared experience as you? Hmm? I'm sorry if this is your attempt to be understood. I don't think it's going to pan out too well, even if they decide to play a little game. I'm guessing you don't really care who lives or dies here. You're just trying to make a point. But the sad part is, nobody's going to buy your argument whether you live or die. These guys aren't about to say, oh, wow, wow, I just clicked a button and I'm a serial killer. Let me go out and kill some more because it's my fate. <laughs> this whole fate thing is a cop-out. It's your way to kill without taking responsibility. I don't know how anyone would see that as anything other than pathetic. I mean, if you're going to kill, own it. For you still to be wondering what my point is with this public display is really quite demoralizing. Luckily, I think you're the only one who's still confused. I mean, am I trying to build an army? Not at all. I mean, I'm not the one calling people hunters. What I'm doing is creating a, a, a unique experience that I hope will make them reflect on their fate and 
what led them here. So, I'll say it again, plain and clear. You can't control your fate. Nobody can. And right now, I'm offering up my own life to prove that point. I don't expect to be considered a martyr, and I have no problem of being a killer. But I'm not a killer without a cause. Driscoll, listen. I'm sorry that you were given a raw deal as a child. I really am. But this idea of yours that everything revolves around fate? It's not grounded in reality. It's the product of an eight-year-old psyche. It's, it's a way of rationalizing an unmanageable experience. I'm sorry, Driscoll. But it's not real. The way I see it, some people never figure out their purpose in life. And I knew mine before I was 10. Now, I know fully well that my reality and yours don't overlap, but I can't expect you to understand. CD, I've built my life on an idea, and you've built yours on the opposite. The justice of fate against the justice of choice. Then I guess it's a battle of ideas. Because you're right. Justice by all is the foundation of everything I stand for. And my hunters are testament to its power. You know, <laughs> the irony in all of this is that you started it. When I began, I just wanted to be like you. I wanted to be strong like you. I wanted to stop the bad guys from hurting the innocent. That's why I'm here today. Wow, I... Uh, I never realized that I had that kind of an impact on you. I mean, that's why I chose the path I did, and why after working inside the system, I realized that justice is bigger than the system. The very idea of justice by all implies that people are inherently good. And they will make the right choice if you let them. Maybe we're not so different after all. In the end, we both believe that the outcome will be the right one, whether it's serving justice or fate. Yeah, I guess so. So this is it? This is how it ends? This is, uh... All I've planned for. Well, friends, it's uh, it's been a wild ride. You've impressed and uh, amused and surprised me so many times. Say goodbye with no regrets. Except maybe my typos. Goodbye, Jessica. Goodbye, Dave. The aftermath of the event revealed that Driscoll left a scheduled tweet behind, telling ARG that he answered all their questions and they should find them at just the right time. Shortly after, a final briefing arrived from D. After yesterday's event, well, 
All I can say is thank you for your bravery in making the decision you did. I owe you my life, although it came at a heavy cost. Listen, there is no doubt that I am grateful for the fact that I'm sitting here, but I want to express how sorry I am that How sorry I am that you were put into that situation and that you were forced to kill. Like I told Infinity, I do this to protect the innocent from the bad guys, but yesterday, even though I thought I was protecting you, all I did was pull you directly into his trap. And now, even though he's dead, I can't shake the feeling that the bastard won. That's something that I have to reconcile. But everything that happened allowed me to pinpoint the flaw in our system. Infinity was able to pit us against each other because I made the mistake of separating myself from the crowd. The crowd is stronger than any one face. When I gave Justice by All a face, I gave it a target. So I'm going to change the way we do things. No more briefings. No more videos. This is the last you'll see of me. But just because you won't see me doesn't mean I'm gone. Basically, I'm not stepping down. I'm just stepping back. I'm joining the ranks as one of you. And no matter how it affected me personally, yesterday was a triumph for justice by all. I am so impressed with how you guys have proven yourself as true hunters and how clearly you're capable of making tough decisions. When you look back on the choice you made yesterday, I don't want you to think of it as the day you killed someone. Rather, is the day you saved a life. So, keep hunting, because you are justice by all. And if you wanted some sort of end credit scene for D, that wish is granted. Sleep Superbly updates on Fate's profile, but now featuring D, testing out sleep therapy from Driscoll's bot. She mentions dreaming of floating in a lifeboat, which Angel notes is a symbol of escaping evil, according to Dream Dictionaries. As for Driscoll's last Will interview, that was at a website page titled, Just the Right Time. This video was not saved, but the transcript was. There's a bit of interest in his Q&A, which is largely composed of answers to players through ARGNet rather than from ARGNet itself. Driscoll said he didn't go looking for victims. Whenever he saw someone in the news that fit the bill of someone who controlled the fate of others, and there was notoriety to them, that was it. Because with fame comes the illusion of being above fate. You know, even D, whom I kept an eye on for quite some time, didn't really qualify into my circle of friends until she stepped out as the serial huntress, but I always knew that our paths would cross again somehow. So in the end, it wasn't necessarily a punishment for those who interfered with fate that Driscoll was bringing down on victims as Infinity. It was an act of stripping power from those he saw as believing they could control fate. His encounter with a roulette killer, being told to shoot D, that he had to, and fighting back with the insistence that he couldn't be made to do so. That moment has been on a loop in his psyche forever. D was right. Driscoll's pathology stems from an inability to move past his abduction and killing of roulette. And being stuck in that moment, he's made a coping mechanism out of a philosophy based on the only means he had at the time to escape. Inflicting death on a person who exerted power over someone's fate, he needed a way to frame the situation, to remedy what happened to him and what he, an eight-year-old boy, chose to do. But his remedy solved nothing. He's only created replica situations over and over again, putting himself back in his own role, but now as the Avenger, not the victim. None of Infinity's murders were really about fate or teaching a lesson. They were about a deep-seated psychological need to accept and resolve his killing of Roulette and the trauma he experienced. Driscoll has spent his life trying to justify committing murder as a child while finding purpose in the tragedy inflicted on him, and that justification never came. 
so he had to create it, and his solution was infinity. Driscoll's mind is stuck deep inside the roulette killer vent through the infinity symbol for a few reasons. First, we know the gun had that symbol on it, which Driscoll underlines as incredibly important to him in the phone call with D. Second, he was eight years old at the time, eight being, of course, the symbol for infinity turned 90 degrees. If we review the material from the article about the escape from the roulette killer, we'll also find that D and Driscoll were the eighth pair put together. But there may be more to it that gets into the subtle terrain of thinking. If you've watched Dexter, the character of D. Pratt probably reminds you of someone. Deborah Morgan, Dexter's sister, who is equally relentless when it comes to catching a suspect. Driscoll started out looking as the Dexter analog, we know that. And now, we're more aware of the D.D. connection between both pairs of characters. Let's take that idea. Dexter and Deborah, Driscoll and D. Think about the face-to-face -face game scenario set up by Roulette, and try to mirror it with their initials. Face to face, D D. Do you see it? Here, let's overlap in the middle just a bit. Flat as the outer edges may be, this is an infinity symbol. D and Driscoll, fates intertwined. The final point we can observe is the psychological impression given by the infinity symbol. Though twisted, the infinity is unbroken, coursing perfectly along its path, unchanged inseverable. If it had started as an O or zero when a ball was placed inside as if running along a track, twisting this shape would do nothing to the course of the ball's journey. It would ride the same way, the same path, even though it doesn't appear so at first glance. Infinity's meaning in this way is clear. You cannot change fates. Now, was D correct in pointing out all the logical and philosophical flaws in Driscoll's argument? Absolutely. Driscoll shooting Roulette instead of following the command according to the game can very much be seen as defiance of fate, even if he argues that he simply pushed the direction of his own. And in becoming a killer himself, Driscoll did decide the fate of others. He controlled their fates. There's nothing more fatal than death, after all. The philosophy's merit, however, isn't the point. Understanding infinity is the goal, and we've done that by the end. With the reveal of his origin and the weight of that moment, we can also solve the issue of the final two victims. The eighth was supposed to be either himself or D, that's clear. But what about the one before, number seven? That placement, I believe, is actually victim number six. And victim number five is really victim number six, and so on and so forth, because the true first victim was, for Driscoll, the roulette killer. Add him into the mix, and by the finale, only D or Infinity were on the table for Victim 8, the final kill. A pair locked into a game of fate, one will die, reflecting the Roulette Killer series of games perfectly. Now there's always the possibility there was a Victim 7 who was missed, but with Infinity's mentality about it all, I doubt that. That isn't to say game pieces weren't left on the floor, I'm sure there were items the players didn't catch. But everything that needed to be found was, I think. Players got their endgame successfully and stuck the landing. If they were the Dexter Morgan surrogate, and they absolutely were, then this is the true ending. I can say that with confidence, because even though Dexter, Deborah, and Miami PD were all absent from this tale, this was absolutely a Dexter story. This whole game ran precisely like a season of Dexter, with players taking on his role. Every season of the show deals with the main villain a multi-step hunt for Dexter to go on, who usually finds himself in a race against Miami's homicide division to catch and kill the suspect before they're apprehended. Dexter's big targets are usually this elaborate and disturbed too. Infinity fits into the gallery so perfectly that he may as well have been written as a potential season concept, and his tale and themes of fate would have challenged Dexter's own ideas and thoughts along the way. Viewers familiar with the show can probably imagine the kind of inner monologues Dexter would be having with himself over the concepts Infinity presented, and if any of it ever applied to his life. But in the end, the only fate Dexter would have accepted includes Infinity on his kill room table. And because players chose Infinity to receive the bullet, they effectively played Dexter. This was an excellent ARG, and the highest praise I can give goes to the power of the secondhand experience. I often enjoy myself going through the narrative of a game after the fact, but seldom do I feel the page-turner effect coming on, that psychological need to just keep going and getting more. Infinity produced that for me. It provided me feelings of being a player at points even though the game was over, which is a feat. And that finale, the way it was set up, how it played out, 
very satisfying. This was a very dedicated game, incorporating a physical set-piece kickoff, videos, websites, social media accounts, dead drops, phone numbers, the works. And while some games can't manage to write the logic behind use of codes and puzzles by characters in the narrative, Infinity succeeds because we aren't just dealing with a serial killer. We're dealing with one who absolutely needed an audience willing to go that far. A group of people he had to hook, tease, and compel to the endgame. His position in life explained his technical prowess, why he was able to travel so much, and he made it clear he had been planning for this entire sequence of events for years. This wasn't a game to Driscoll, and the reasoning behind his actions isn't flimsy. We can believe in this character who laid out all these puzzles, these codes, these challenges, because he's written in such a way that it is his character. Our experience is made altogether better for it. Infinity was a game nearly lost to the ebb and flow of the internet, but we have Angel no relation and the work of all her fellow hunters to thank for salvaging as much of the experience as they did. Shoutouts as well to ARGNet for their involvement and coverage, others who blogged about it, and those who created this experience. That was a lot of work, and some writing that was wonderfully close to the spirit of Dexter. And with this case closed, I'd like to thank Surfshock for joining us on this investigation with a sponsorship and offer for Nightmind viewers, all of you for watching, and my supporters on Patreon, who I know I could trust in a game of Deadly Roulette. You can help support the work I do on Nightmind and through the Nightmind Index by becoming a Patreon supporter too, for as low as just $2 a month. Every bit helps, and I appreciate it immensely. Stick around to see the names of all these creatures of the night in just a moment. I also invite you to explore the projects currently listed in the Nightmind Index. There are at least 80 entries available to view, and I have no doubt you'll find some new unfiction experiences that you find worth pursuing. Remember, you won't just be finding new content before I cover it, you'll be supporting new and underdiscovered creators in the field, which benefits unfiction as a whole. Make someone's holiday this year by supporting their work, and you might just be rewarded in kind with an experience that kicks off the new year in a great way. That's all for now, everyone. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. I'm Nick Nocturne, and like everyone's favorite nice guy blood spatter analyst, I'll be back again real soon. Until then, sleep tight.